The yo, it's in New York. Yo, it's in New York. Yo, it's in New York. To New York, to New York. With the yo, it's in New York. Yo, it's in New York. Yo, it's in New York. To New York, to New York. And welcome to Crash Chords Autographs. Today, Matt is joined by Ryan McCombs, lead singer of the band Soil. Formed in 1997, Soil has now released their sixth studio album, Hole, which was released in August 2013. After taking leave from the band between 2004 and 2011, Ryan discusses this departure, his interim work with the band Drowning Pool, and his eventual return to Soil. Matt also joins him in discussing the changing landscape of the metal and heavy rock scenes to the present date. So without further delay, here's Matt Storm and Ryan McCombs. Hey, how are you, man? I'm doing okay. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you for uh, agreeing to do the interview tonight. I appreciate it. Oh, no problem. I just walked in the door from grabbing a bite to eat, or grabbing a bite to bring home to eat. All of a sudden, my phone went off. I was like, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my alarm went off. I had set in there and let me know there was time to, uh, to do this here. Cool. Well, I'm I'm glad that I'm able to have you today. Um, I personally first want to thank you because I am a huge fan. I've been listening to you guys since Scars. Um, oh, thank you. And when you first, there, that mom, momentary time when you were not in the band, I was really upset because your voice is one of the things that attracted me to Soil. So I followed you to dead, uh, to um, Drowning Pools and then followed you back to Soil because <laughs> I, you know, I appreciate it. You know, growing growing up, um, that the scars came out when I was in high school. So, a song like "Unreal" was really personal to me too, because when I was going through shit, like that was my favorite kind of song to listen to. So that was a a great record for me. Yeah, it was good, man. I appreciate your uh, support through the years. It's given us <laughs> given an old hobbit like myself a job over the last eighteen years. <laughs> Well, yeah, you know, and I like coming back to hearing you to your work and I love the new record whole. Um, it's funny. I discovered it through Shauna. Actually, I'd started working with her and interviewing some other members of the pavement family. And, uh, she sent me an email about you guys promoting whole. And I was like, wait, he's back. They're back. Yes. <laughs> and I'm so excited. So, and so I reached out to her last week and she said, you're going on a European tour soon. So now would be the best time yeah, to do an interview. Tomorrow. Wow, tomorrow. And so how long are you guys overseas for? Way too long. Um, <laughs> about uh, three weeks. Wow. Yeah, she got to hold me. She's like, I want to make sure because I know it's going to be like the last night of being home with the with the better half. I'll make sure I didn't mess any plans up. But like, yeah, we can fit it in, no problem. Cool. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. So um, the, the, the record hole, when you guys put that out, um, was that – project more or less like any other kind of album you guys came together wrote the music um was there a certain thing that inspired the arc of that record and and kind of the the feel of it i think uh it was such a process because you know we got together to do the uh 10th anniversary scars tour over in the uk and from that point i got home and leading up to us kind of feeling like you know i wasn't really sure what my next step was I got back from it, and uh, a few weeks later, me and CJ got on the phone with each other, and kind of just decided, you know, it was just, you know, he knew my heart wasn't in it, and so we decided, you know, to part ways, and I really didn't know what I wanted to do anymore. It seems like every seven years of my career, I've always been that way. Every seven years of my life, whether it's a relationship or whether it's whatever, I have a seven-year itch with everything, and that's where I was with the drowning pool thing, and that's where I'd gotten to with the soil thing back in the day. And uh, we started talking about more and more. We started talking about doing another soil record. And what if we did? Well, how would you want to do it? What would we do? And uh, next thing you know, we decided, you know, hey, if we did it, we're all on the same page. If we did it, we want to do it. We want to handle everything ourselves. And since we were all on the same page with that, you know, it was just kind of go time. And we recorded it kind of differently because well, I say that, but again, it wasn't. I mean, back in the day, you know, Adam used to send me CDs with music on it. Whereas nowadays, the only real difference is I was down in Baton Rouge, Louisiana at the time. The rest of the guys are still in Chicago, so you would just kind of send me emails. Sure. And I would listen to, I would listen to songs that way and, and jot down some ideas, just rolling on stuff vocally. 
so we just went back and forth a lot like that. And but we still even, you know, we did write a couple of them with me heading up to Chicago. We bought ourselves in a room and and write that way as well too. I mean, a couple songs like the Hate Song and stuff came out that way. So this album really consists with a lot of different, a lot of different. You know, we took a lot of different paths to get to the finalization of this record. Cool. And so um, this new tour, you, uh, who are you going out with uh, overseas? We're taking Head PE and American Head Charge with us over there. Nice. Excellent. That's very cool. Two, two other bands I'm very into. I actually got to interview Mark Young from Head PE. Uh, he was one cool. of the first episodes of this show. so, And he was a great dude to talk to. The guy knows his music and he's been doing it a while. Gotcha. Yeah. Good guys. Um, and so... You know, now that that soil's back and running strong, um, I'm sure it must be great, though, to kind of be back in it and doing it. Um, how long have you been singing for? I know, I mean, I, I followed your career since Scars, but when did you actually first really get into yeah. singing? Well, I was, uh, I sang for two bands, two different uh, you know, local area bands back in Indiana before I joined Soil. Uh, I was actually doing all three at one point in time. and. Uh, those were the first bands I ever sang. I played bass for years before that. And uh, so I joined Soil in 97. I would guess to say, uh, I'd guess to say I, I probably started singing. I was kind of forced into having to sing probably in uh, 95 or so. 90, yeah, probably around 95. And uh, I didn't really have much of a choice. I screwed up early on in my, my playing days. And, was, we were trying out singers and we had some original music and I was like, yeah, no, man, I'm just not hearing that. This is what I'm hearing. I played the song, I'm singing to it. And the other one with everybody was really quiet. I was like, oh God, I must have sucked that. And everybody was like, why the hell are you still playing bass? We can find the bass player. <laughs> you can start singing. And I was like, no, no chance in hell. I always like bass, man. You know, you'd, you'd kind of disappear in the background with bass if you wanted to. And I was like that. And it wasn't until my first year of college that, uh, Card started getting the itch again. I got hold of guys that I always played with, and they already had something else going. And all they needed was a singer, so they're like, "Yeah, sure, if you sing." <laughs> so, <laughs> kind of forced my hand into into doing it, and that's you know it's all history now. But uh, yeah, it started probably about '95, I guess. Cool. And so you played bass before that. And were you playing bass oh, yeah. for a long time before that? Yeah, I played played bass for a good seven years or more. Oh wow. And tried my hand to guitar and drums before that, but I, I sucked way too bad at those. <laughs> well, Luckily, my career has been blessed with having talented guitar players like CJ and Adam. Well, and it's also kind of no secret now that you are a talented singer and you've made quite a career out of that. So, uh, yeah, I, I still just thank the heavens, you know, the people out there have been giving me the time of day this long. It amazes me. I'm, I'm still the same flat billy from Indiana that I ever was, and it just uh, it amazes me that. You know, this amount of time of later, it may it amazes me that I ever got a shot because I should the stage with a hell of a lot better talent, more talented people than myself through the years. And to still be doing it, to still be allowed to do it by the people that give me the time of their day, it's freaking amazing. It's, it's a hell of a gift by a lot of people I've ever had the chance to shake hands with, you know? Sure, yeah. Um, and so um, after you guys come back from tour, is there plans for another new record? Are you still going to take some time with the current one? Well, we're still planning on doing, you know, we're only two singles in right now. We're planning on doing three. Okay. So uh, they're already talking about, you know, they're already lining up stuff here in the States, and they're talking about going back overseas in, uh, in March of next year, back over to Europe and the U.K., as well as they're even working on a uh, South Africa little run in South Africa sometime here at the beginning of the year, which would be cool because I've never been there. And so it's not only is it cool to still be doing it, but, you know, there's, Every once in a while, when something like that pops up, like I went to Australia for the first time this year, and little things like that pop up, it's kind of that neat little reward. You know, it sucks being away from loved ones so much. You know, wham. But at the same time, when something <laughs> like that happens, and you go somewhere cool and and just kind of see another aspect of the world, it's a, it's another cool gift of the of the job. Yeah, sure. No, yeah, it's it's always tough to be in that position. Like you wanna you wanna go out and rock and and do what you do, but you know to be away from the ones you love is never easy either. I imagine. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely just want to kidnap my hun and put her in my suitcase or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Um, and so when you find yourself out on tour for long periods of time, um, what do you do to keep busy besides obviously the performances and possibly writing? Do you have any hobbies that you focus on? Right now I've been writing a lot. The past few years I've been writing a lot on, uh, I'm in the middle. This is horrible. That's why I'm not done with one of them yet. But I'm in the middle of three different books right now. Oh, wow. And, uh, so, I mean, I plan on the first one being done and hitting the masses at the beginning of the year. Um, be wrapping up the be wrapping it up here within the next month. I plan on finishing it while I'm over in Europe. And uh and we were I was just talking with the publishing company the other day and it sounds like I'd be shooting at the beginning of the year for the uh, for the release of it. Cool. At least people are curious about my stupid life and, and then drop some Christmas money on it or something. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Cool. And so these books are biographical books or the first one is. The first one is just kind of a humorous you know, a, a middle finger to myself and, a, and to a lot of people around me, the, you know, to and through my my uh, my life in the music business. Oh, cool. You know, starting as a child and just the, the the reason I got here and and what I think about being here. And I guess it seems like the more frustrated, the more what the heck off I am about things, people seem to take it funnier and funnier. So, you know, people have been on me for a long time to write, uh, to write. So I just finally set myself down and started making myself do it. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, and I find personally, like when, when I am a fan of something, if I can get to know that, that person more personally through some way, like writing or whatever, like it, that always pulls me to it, you know, podcasting and, and writing, like some of my favorite things to do is listen to autobiographical audiobooks read by the author, because then you, you get a real sense of their personal story and it kind of sucks you in. Right. Which is, which is always fun. Um, I was curious just because by by hearing the way you sing and, and the way you guys play, I could surmise some influences. But I'm always curious what a singer draws their influence from for their for their singing style. Were there certain artists artists growing up that influenced you into the music that you guys are playing now? I mean, you know, I, I listen to my dad always had music playing in the house. Um, he was probably the most talented musician when it came to pushing the play button on a stereo. Um, <laughs> You know, he taught himself how to play guitar later in life before he passed, but but uh, never had a musical bone in his body. But he just loved music, <clears throat> and uh, so from the day I can remember, you know, there was always Pink Floyd or ACDC or Creedence Clearwater, uh, Aerosmith, something being played, and he listened to everything from that stuff to you know David Bowie, The Rolling Stones, um, even weird like stuff like Kitaro. And just he always had something going on. My brother was five years older than me, so you know I then had that influence on me. You know, I then had him, you know, going through the '80s. I had him listening to all your hair bands and and all that, and and it was him that bought me my first Metallica CD. And and you know, I think I think Allison Chains is probably that first band that was I considered my band because it seemed like everybody in my life always turned me on to this or that. But Allison Chains is that one band that. You know, I still remember going to Clash of the Titans and they were opening that up for uh, you know, Slayer, Megadeth, and Anthrax. And some little band called Alice in Chains got up on stage, played 20 minutes, and didn't pause between songs. And I just sat there going, what the hell did I just see? <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, it ended up being just a, a huge influence in my life, musically. Cool. Yeah. Well, yeah. Alice in Chains is one of those bands that there was kind of nothing like them before or after, you know, yeah. they kind of came in, hit really hard. They were around for a while and then, then just kind of disappeared. Yeah, so many bands get that Seattle, you know, best band out of Seattle for me, it was always Alice in Chains. Yeah. Same you for know, me. Was, I can, I, I can give credit where credit is due. And I definitely give credit to, to your sound gardens and to your Pearl Jams of this world. And then they're bought it for doing what they did and being successful at it. But for me, it was, you know, Alice in Chains was my Seattle parent for sure. Yeah. Well, I've gotten myself into trouble by saying I think Nirvana was a little overrated. Uh, just <laughs> because, like, I'm a huge Foo Fighters fan also, and I think Dave Grohl is a huge talent. And, like, I, I you know, it's... It's a nice, nice thing. Just, it, it, you know, like, I joke when I talk to people like that, it's like Dave, and I'm just always like, yeah, everything they touch, they seem to have success at it. Yeah. And I'm just like, God, it must be sucked. It must suck to be used. <laughs> Everything right. you do is just you, know, you go from Nirvana to Foo Fighters. So it's good. It's gotta be tough. I I would just hate waking up in the morning knowing things are gonna be really cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. You know, but it was one of those things where like all my friends were like, oh, I love Nirvana. I was like, well, I'm kind of. You know, I mean, it sucks what the the way they went, but 
I'm happy to have Dave Grohl in his position now because he does all these awesome things. And who knows if he would have done them without Nirvana breaking right. up, you know? Right, right. So, you know, it's always interesting to think about stuff like that. Like Queen is one of my favorite bands of all time. So I always wonder what it would be like if Freddie Mercury was still alive today. Like he would still be making kick ass, mm-hmm. amazing vocals. And it would, I feel, I'm curious what like pop and rock would be like if he was still around. Right. Because he was just such a unique voice. Um, oh yeah. There's a talent band, Brian May and all. Sure. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you guys have been, uh, you've obviously been doing this, this singing gig for a while now, um, and you've been playing this genre of music, you know, this kind of heavy rock, new metal sound for a while, right. the multiple bands you've been in. Is there any other sound you've been curious to explore, sing for, maybe play an instrument for? No, not really. You know, it seems like no matter what I do, I always just sing the sound like me. Right. And, you know, I, as far as vocals go, I, you know, I, I don't, no matter what style of music I, you know, over the years, like I, the two bands I was in before, throwing up soil, one was a, I guess what you would call stoner rock, <laughs> and the other one was a, was just a hardcore band. And you go back and listen to anything I've ever done. It's always, yeah, I don't consider myself to have a lot of range. I don't, I don't have, I've never done anything to give to help my voice. Uh, I've just, I just got what I got. And so when I hear myself, I hear a very limited voice and everything just always sounds like me. Right? You know, there are a lot of ways that it hurt when people hear it, they know who it is, but at the same time, right. you know, it never really got me got me thinking about other things. I, I've been thinking about maybe doing getting together with some artists that I've enjoyed spending time with over the years and, and maybe putting something new out here maybe next year of, of just kind of a solo project with other musicians that I've, that I've spent time with and I enjoyed. Oh, that's cool. All right. Yeah, I mean, but that, that like why you've always stayed kind of in my my mental bank as far as a singer goes is because you have such a unique voice you know your style how you sing and how you sound you know I, I can't think of any other singer who sings exactly like you and even though you say you have this small range that range is so unique that i don't think you need that huge massive range because you make such an impression with the the, the specific voice you have no well, i appreciate that it's definitely it's definitely served me well over the years i Scratch my head at it, but I know that's gonna... <laughs> um, I have a question. My next question actually is when. So I know that Scars is probably like the album that kind of brought you guys to the next level. Back then, when Halo <laughs> broke as a single and then you know top, you know skyrocketed on the charts. What was that like, you know, for you guys as a band? How was Halo breaking out? Yeah, like. Because I remember when Halo kind of came out of nowhere for me. Like, I remember back when New York still had a, a rock radio station, because we don't really have one anymore. Um, I heard that song overnight, and I was like, what the hell is this? I need whatever this is. I have to go find it, you know? And it was kind of, re- and it was really big at the time. Um, were you guys kind of blown away by, by how how big that became so fast? Yeah, I mean, we didn't, we were, I mean, Adam, literally before we went did the demo that that song was on, Adam had to talk me into unloading my truck and not leaving Chicago for good. Wow. I just had it with uh, certain situations within the band. And uh, he talked me into doing one more demo, and that was the demo that Halo was on. And it ended up getting picked up at a radio station out of Orlando, Florida. JJR was very influential at the time. And uh, Atlantic Records picked up, you know, I should mention it, the record label picked, them up, picked up the, the CD it was friends with the program director there, made a deal with us. we give them 30 days or right at first refusal. They picked the song. The program director at the, at the radio station picked the song, picked Halo. Ended up in that week's time that they spot two times a day, ended up being the number one most requested song on the radio station. Wow. And uh, the deal that was offered from the one label that did it, set everything up was just kind of, eh. So we waited our 30 days out and ended up just being, we had our pick of, of, whoever we want. I mean, we had people in the garage with us from Warner Brothers and from Electra and from, you know, all these labels. We heard from everyone. And wow. It was amazing. We went from being, feeling like damaged goods and being like, you know, at the, the end of this year, it's time for me to go home to all of a sudden it's, it's on Mary Mayhem with Ozzy Osbourne and Rob Zombie and Mudvayne. It's, you know. Yeah. It was a whirlwind there for a while. 
Yeah, it's funny how that can ha- that I feel like that doesn't always happen as much anymore because I mean not as many people listen to radio like internet the way yeah, right now. Nothing and... happens. Yeah, I mean, no, you look at the industry and really anymore labels are really just signing bands that have been around for twenty years and they know that they can get X amount of copies out of them with each album. Yeah, you know, nobody. There's no more baby bands. Uh, it, you know, there's it, it's a different world. The industry's changed from one hundred and ten percent. Yeah, and it, it's just interesting to see that that development and how bands have adapted. But I find like a lot of the bands that I got into in the the mid '90s to the early 2000s, like they're the ones that are having a resurgence now, and they're finding their groove in the in the new medium and the new the new scape because they can kind of do what what they want. There's no one telling them kind of do this. The 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 it seems like the all the record labels are trying to work more with them instead of against them now. Yeah. Which, which I'm sure must be nice to kind of do your thing and put out the, these records and then go on tour and, and kind of be yourselves. It must make it a little easier, I'm guessing, these days. Yeah, it's, it's def- definitely a different world and it's definitely a different industry than the ones that we, that we was introduced to, you know, 14 years ago. So, so uh, besides pursuing writing, which it's exciting to hear that you're having a book come out. And so you said that it'll probably come out, you know, it, it's the goal is by the end of this year, early next year is to have the book out. Early next year. Yeah. Cool. And we were going to shoot for before Christmas, but we just figured too many things could possibly get lost between the cracks. So we're just shooting for it early next year at this point. Um, besides writing, are there other um, kind of mediums that you're looking to get into and try uh, artistically, like with writing a script or something like that? Is there other industries you want to take a crack at? Uh, you know, right now, my my better half, uh, you know, she just came off this past year doing that whole Best of Ink. She's a tattoo artist. And oh, cool. And I have been working pretty pretty hard and with a foresight on I'm getting, say, a, a shop opened up. Uh, and just kind of co-own that with her and just enjoy watching her do her craft. That's very cool. And how long has she art, been tattooing yeah, she for? Right now she, she has a lot of art and, and everything for uh, lots of people been buying her stuff on, on the internet. And so I just kind of enjoy watching her create. I think uh, somebody that has the ability to create art out of a blank canvas, is, it's pretty incredible to watch them do the thing. Yeah, for sure. She been How long has she been a tattooist for? Uh, well, she's far, she's, she's far talent-wise, she's far better than her age would indicate she should be. I, I, <laughs> I'm not positive when she got, I think maybe eight years now, um, cool. but I hate to sell her short on that. Um, <laughs> she's only 25, and I think it's been about eight years that she's been doing it with her. No, I'm not positive, actually. I should okay. Come up to it. <laughs> well, it's fine. No, I would, I would hate to get you in trouble. I'd hate for her to listen to this later and go, you said what? Um, but that's very cool. I, yeah, I find that that you know being able to watch someone else fulfill art also is fascinating and interesting, especially when you you can't imagine doing it yourself. You know, you get this perspective right. of watching them work, and it's it's kind of incredible. Yeah, her name's her uh, art name is Izzy Echo, so you know, I invite anybody to check her stuff out as well. Yeah, definitely. I I love to help promote that. That that that's awesome. Um, I have a few local friends in Brooklyn who do tattooing and it's always just like the po- pictures they posted from the work they do is mind blowing. <laughs> um, so, uh, besides tour and um, writing the new book, is there anything you guys are looking to promote specifically? Like you, you'd mentioned that there's going to be a third single off the, the, the newest record. Have you guys yeah. picked what that single is going to be yet? It's going to be way gone. Way gone. Cool. Great. Yeah. And uh, have you guys shot a video for that yet? No, we haven't. We have a, uh, oh, what's his name? <laughs> Just completely in my head right now. Um, Edsel. Edsel Dope is actually putting together a treatment for it and we're supposed to get it here. We're supposed to receive it before we leave tomorrow, so we'll see if that occurs or not. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Um, it, uh, the, the next thing I wanted to ask is if, if you could on the next record kind of team up with any vocalist of your choice to kind of do like a duet style song. Is there one that sticks out in your mind as you would love to work with personally? Yeah, I, I got gained so many friends over the years. I, I, there's so many that it would be cool to, so, you know, whether it was Lejean or, or whether it was Chad, uh, Chad Gray, um, Ivan, 
uh, so many Lee, there's, <laughs> there's so many guys out there I consider friends and, you know, just, uh, have respected their work and have, have appreciated their friendship through the years that I think it'd be cool, you know, to, to do something with before I hang the hat on the hook for the last time. <laughs> well, hopefully that won't be for a while. Um, the, wow, I just completely mid-sentence lost my train of thought. Um, <laughs> I can still smell my pad ties. I'm like looking at it going, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, so with with everything with soil and this this new tour taking off, um, you know, obviously since you're working on this book, do you spend most of your time on tour focusing on that? Do you have any uh, TV shows or movies that you prefer to watch while you're on the road that you kind of keep close with you? You know, the old, I'm more of a comedy guy. I hate horror movies. I don't feel like spending money on something that's gonna make me all tense and make me feel like I was in a car wreck for hours afterwards. Um, so I'm more into something that makes me laugh. <laughs> you know, I, I love the Will Ferrell classics, your Anchor Man, your or Anchor Man, no. um, your you know, here's just a lot of the ha ha's. Um, I picked up a movie not too long ago called God Bless America that Joel Murray, Bill Murray's brother, was in. Oh, I, I heard about that. Yeah, I played it for the rest of the guys while we were out here on this last run, and they all just loved it. Cause it's such a smart movie, dialogue-wise. And I found myself being drawn to either funny movies or movies like that. Like Ryan Reynolds did a movie a while back called The Nines. And just movies like that that make you think. And and they're, they are done in interesting ways. Um, there's a movie called Brick. Oh, I've seen Brick, uh, yeah, with Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Yeah. That movie's fantastic. Yeah. And Hesher. That's yeah. just one of them I like. But movies that kind of make you think and are kind of done in different ways along with your comedies are the ones that I love. Yeah, a great comedy that a lot of people haven't heard of is, the, is Lone, Lone Star State of Mind. I would definitely throw it out there. The, there's a, the character that plays Opie in Sons of Anarchy is in this movie, and it's such a different character that a lot of people don't think, doesn't even realize it's him until the movie's about half over. Then they can't believe it because he plays just your straight-up redneck rotting teeth out of his head idiot <laughs> in this oh, wow. movie. But yeah, such a such a uh, opposition from or such a different character from Opie. Um obviously um people would imagine that you'd be into a lot of heavy metal and rock as we were talking a bit earlier, but is there a genre of music that you listen to that people might be surprised to know that you like? Oh, I love uh I think it, I got weird taste. So I, I guess it's from being around my dad, but you know, I love the Black Bible Society. I love anything that Zach has done in his career. Um, but at the same time, you know, as you know, same time I like Black Bible Society, I like Volbeat, which is different. To, um, at the same time, I like those. I also like, like to me, one of my favorite albums is still Tiger Lily from Natalie Merchant, like one of her first solo albums, about her first solo album. Um, so Tiger Lily from Natalie Merchant. I love anything that the, uh, oh, why can't I think of it? These, this one only works here within like the last one of the, so the last one of the, the Scott Irish, uh, band. Um, uh, I forget. Um, one it if it comes to you later, feel free to interrupt and blurt yeah. it out. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't need um, yeah, I always find it fascinating to hear what, what music musicians listen to besides, I, and I'm also always curious to wonder, do you guys listen to your own music? Do you, do you find yourself listening to your stuff or? Yeah, you do a lot, like right after you get out of the studio, I, I listen to the, the new CDs a lot afterwards, just trying to critique and see what maybe, you know, it, it, it's a double-edged sword. You want to kind of, you're kind of want to make sure that you did everything the way you wanted. And at the same time, for me, I'm trying to remember what I did do vocally so that I can sing these songs live. <laughs> sure, right. Do you do you have is, do lyrics come to you pretty easily, or are you are you pretty good about remembering them? It depends. No, I'm horrible about remembering. <laughs> um, I tend to write pretty easily, but uh, remembering them, I everybody I've ever been in a band with, anybody that knows me, it was, it was it's an ongoing joke. But um, you know, I've probably written hundreds of songs at this point between the bands that didn't get signed and then soil years and, and tranquil years. And uh I always use that as my excuse, but the truth is my, my brain just sucks ass. And so um yeah, I, I tend to forget lyrics a lot. Uh, do you have like any tactic you try and implore to try and remember specific songs? Yeah, or? No, no, no. It's just good luck with it. 
Oh, well, you know, I mean, in, in the moment, I'm sure people are rocking so hard that they probably wouldn't even notice most of the time. Yeah. You get that weird look every once in a while, I guess. Well, that's cool. well, yeah, you have that one fan in the front who's singing along to every word, and then they're they, like, you right. skip something, and they're like, what? Right. <laughs> um, and so when you guys write albums, is it is it very much collaborative? Does one person kind of yeah. come up with an idea, or is it just kind of everybody kind of coming in? So Adam is, he's a music guy, really. And I'm the lyric guy. That's the way it always was in soil and, and is today. And you know, with with a uh, giant pool, it was, it was CJ was the music, and and I was the, the lyrics. And just still, it doesn't bust to have a couple of great guitar players because I can't play for a shit. <laughs> and so, um, usually, how, what order does it go? Like, do they come to you with the good guitar riff, and you kind of put come up with lyrics over it? Or are they completely independent? Yeah. No, it's, it's usually guitar riffs, uh, kind of the base of a song is put together, and then I start playing lyrics on it. And then as I'm working on lyrics, you know, if I hear something that needs to be done more, or maybe this should be the chorus, and maybe you need to switch these these things around where this is the chorus and this is the verse, you know, I, I, I'll start screwing with the structure of the song as I'm doing the lyrics. And we just kind of bounce those types of ideas off of each other until the song is, is what it is, you know. Cool. Yeah, I've always found like the couple of songs I've wrote, I find myself like having trouble kind of deciphering the chorus from the verse sometimes, depending on how I've written it. And so I'm always curious right. about the process, you know, and what goes into it because I've known artists to kind of do it separately, do it together, one follows the other. And so it's always unique to hear yeah. what the different process is. Well, cool, Matt. Well, I appreciate your time tonight. I got a, my last night here with the with the better half, so I'm going to jump off here and grab a little bit of dinner I pulled in the house and is there anything else that you, you wanted you definitely wanted to get before you No, I mean if you want to give a shout out to where where you'll be in Europe, you know, mention to those who might be listening, uh what where where you guys are gonna hit up uh, across the country. Yeah, we uh man, I the best thing I can say is and I I can't think of it right now, but there's the the official soil Facebook page that has all the tour dates. There's, there's cool. the actual website soilthebam dot com and I have my own Facebook and my own Instagram and stuff that people have come to enjoy this, this stupid idiotic rants that come flying out of my, <laughs> my head jelly once in a while. So, Very um, cool. yeah, there's, there's definitely the places out there to get the information and I'm just not good at it. Cause uh, I just don't pay on that month. You know, I'm like, it's up here and this is when, and then I do that and it's your time. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate you taking your time on your last night in the country, Ryan. This has been a pleasure. And uh, I oh, love Thank you, Matt. I appreciate it. No, it's been, it's been awesome as a fan and as, as a podcaster. I really appreciate the time. And we'll definitely have to hook up sometime next year after you've toured and worked on more stuff. I'd love to hear about the book and chat about the book once that's out. Absolutely, Matt. I appreciate you helping get the word out there. My pleasure. Take care, Ryan. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. If you enjoyed these interviews, please subscribe to this and the Crash Chords podcast on iTunes, where you can also rate us and review us. You can also like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at Crash Chords Web, our Tumblr, and our YouTube channel. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post in the comment area below each post. And keep the discussion going, because remember, music is life, and life is good.